the protocol or agent protocol of uh, hyperglycemia. Very important, especially now we have one baby. So uh, how we define hyperglycemia? Uh, it depends the sample doing whole blood or uh, 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 plasma. If the whole blood is more than 125 milligrams of deciliter or 6.9 millimole, or the uh, plasma is a little bit higher, 145 or 8 millimole, we start think of hyperglycemia. Okay? Usually I diagnose it when it's more than 12 millimole, or if it's between 10 and 12 uh, with gluco uh, glucose urea, meaning glucose in the urine, I also think of hyperglycemia. Um, but usually I start think of treatment when we have two digits. So 10, 10 point, and so on, two digit number. But eight, I will start maybe thinking of hyperglycemia, but not diagnosis. So the acceptable level is about 72 to 145, 4 to 8. And uh, when we want to convert milligram to deciliter, we use a converting factor of 18. Uh, very common, very common in the preterm baby and low birth weight babies, and especially those on parental impression. Also, when the baby becomes sick, whether we have sepsis or neck or RDS, they also cannot digest the insulin. Um, there is no specific symptom for a baby with uh, uh, hyperglycemia, uh, but the uh, major problem is hyperosmolarity. Okay? and also uh, cause lots of urine output and might cause dehydration and baby also might lose weight. Um, and also uh, uh, hypercarbic dyslexia might, might cause some stagnance. Um, and and uh, you can see there is an 800 milligram per deciliter or one millimole uh, can increase the uh, osmolarity, the osmolarity by one milliosmol per milliliter. And that's mean more urine output. Uh, so uh, most common, as I said, is, is, is dehydration due to uh, water loss. Um, so the water loss from extra fluid, and then uh, it might precipitate for IVH. So it's very important to treat it aggressively. Uh, now, hyperglycemia means diabetes, right? But in neonatal period, very rare to see diabetes mellitus in babies with neonatal hyperglycemia. Usually, hyperglycemia is as a secondary. Um, and the symptoms of uh, diabetes mellitus in, in big babies are you know, polyuria, polydepsia, means eat, uh, drink more, dehydration, and, and ketoacidosis, meaning metabolic acidosis, and ketones positive. Um, there is some uh, underlying genetic factors for causing uh, neonatal diabetes mellitus, but this disease is very rare. Uh, so most of the common cause of neonatal hyperglycemia is iatrogenic. It's caused by us, because you want to give more glucose. So whenever you give uh, more than four to five milligram per kg per minute in a preterm babies, it might associate with hyperglycemia. Uh, also drugs that we give might cause hyperglycemia, uh, such as steroid, uh, caffeine, uh, phenytoin, disoxide. Disoxide is a drug used for um, uh, for treatment of hypoglycemia, so it causes hypoglycemia. One of the most common is extreme low birth weight. So baby is more less than one kilo, less than 1,000 grams. Okay, but the reason is because uh, the insulin response is unguaranteed. Uh, also, a persistent production of uh, hepatic glucose, resistance to insulin. Uh, we're giving lots of fluid in these babies to grow because they have a lot of insensible water loss, or so might reach even 180 or 200 ml per kg per day. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, one of the most important reasons of hyperglycemia is we cannot use D5, never ever. And there is reason it can cause hypotonia in these babies and it can cause a bleeding IVH and it can cause loss of renal problem. So we should never ever use D5. And that's why when you use high fluid and D10, you get lots of sugar and this is a cause of hyperglycemia. Humidification of the uh, uh, 
of the environment can cause also hyperglycemia. Uh, when we humidify the good news, when we humidify the baby, that means we have less fluid loss, that means we will need less fluid, and that means less sugar load. Uh, lipid inclusion uh, can increase glucose level, so we use lipid here. Sepsis can cause hyperglycemia because of releasing of chemicals that depress insulin, and that's why the baby cannot diagnose, such as uh, cytokines, endotoxin. Stress hormones, such as steroid, catecholamine, increase the glucose release. Uh, so whenever we have uh, normal glucose intake, like four to eight milligram per kg per minute, sepsis need to be rolled out. Any stress on the baby, pain, procedure, manipulation, sickness, can cause hyperglycemia. Hypoxia, when the baby has desaturation and uh, surgical procedures, can de stress and cause release of epinephrine, glucocorticoid, glucagon. Uh, also, in surgery, you might need more glucose. So, surgery can cause hyperglycemia. Neonatal diabetes is very rare disorder. And I'm not going to discuss because it's very young. And usually, it happens when there is genetic background. Uh, neonatal diabetes mellitus can present with a hyperglycemia, but also cause glucosuria, polyuria, dehydration, acidosis. Ketone, because when you have uh, 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 two types of hypoglycemia, not hypoglycemia, ketotic and non-ketotic. But in this situation, uh, uh, when there is uh, uh, high glucose, we don't have ketone. So the ketone is here in the neonatal diabetes is low. And, and the baby can present with failure to fat, not being able. So I'm going to pass the neonatal. I don't want to discuss about it. Uh, the most important is what we call transient hyperglycemia uh, due to um, <coughs> giving uh, hyper or smaller formula or even fluid. Okay? Um, it can also cause hyper, uh, hyperglycemia. Treatment, the most important. So the primary goal is to prevent it first and then early treat. That's the most important when we treat it. And that's why by adjusting the glucose infusion rate, GRI, and also monitoring the glucose. So you should not exceed 8 millimole, a milligram per kg per minute of sugar. 4 to 8, we should not exceed. Rarely we need more. If we start to need more, we will suspect that this baby might need, might develop hyperglycemia and might need uh, insulin. And especially for babies less than 1,000 grams. So how we do that is monitor glucose infusion rate. So for example, if you are giving 100 ml per kg, it's 1,000 baby, and it's D10. So 100 ml times 10, plus 10 grams. 10 grams, that means 1,000 milligram, divided by the 24, divided by 60, and you get the infusion rate. So remember, whenever you are more than eight, start thinking this baby might so most of these babies, if you don't start more with less than four, we never should never give glucose less than four, never ever, because the brain starts to suffer. Okay, but also we start think when we give more than eight, sometimes we need, but think the baby might develop hyperglycemia. Always don't limit glucose, but start to you know be liberal and using insulin. So whenever we need more than eight, start thinking. But never decrease the glucose less than four because the brain needs constant sugar supply and it's the only source of energy for the brain and the brain has no stop. So it's very important to remember, never less than four. And that's the reason why I always start to be done. And there is always a balance between glucose and fluid. We need to remember that. Uh, hypotonic fluid should never be used in the neonatal period like D5. And for two reasons, because it's hypotonic, and then and again, it will decrease the sugar intake to less than four milligram uh, per kg per minute. Okay? When we start uh, protein early, it's a treatment of hypertension. That's why on the first day, we start 
fifty fifty. So D ten fifty and uh, and forty 